Hello everyone, this is Camera Flips, the best place to buy and sell used camera gear. Today is episode number two of A Photographer's Life, where we talk to the people that made the pictures we love. My guest for today is Steve Andrews, a fantastic landscape photographer. Not only is willing to wake up incredibly early to catch the perfect sunrise, but he wants even risk his life for the perfect shot. Steve is currently based in the UK, he drives a Harley Davidson, and he's continuously sharpening his photography and editing skills. Let's jump right in into a conversation. Okay, we are live. Uh, episode number two of Photographer's Life. Uh, today we have uh, Steve, Stephen, Steve Andrews, uh, I guess you prefer. Uh, thank you very much for being uh, with us, uh, Stephen. Uh, as usual, uh, you know, uh, we uh, were very grateful to, to our guest and, and, you know, and, and it's funny how we met. I think, uh, you know, uh, Steve uh, bought something from me, uh, but we had the opportunity to uh, to meet uh, live, and, and and he arrived in his uh, in his motorbike and say, "Oh, this guy's cool. I want I want to know more about what he does." Right? <laughs> that, that was the idea, uh, and so I'm like, "Okay, we exchange uh, contacts." Uh, you know, it turned out that he's is a fantastic photographer, so that's why he's on the show. Uh, Steve, uh, again, thank you very much for being here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, right? You know, and how you got into photography. Uh, okay, so well, I, um, uh, I I I do have a motorcycle. I ride a I ride a Harley Davidson. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to work out a way where I can blend the two, but the um, the, the, the 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 luggage on the with the camera and the clothes you have to wear it makes it very uncomfortable to to ride to a location and then have to to, to travel all that stuff. So I'm still I'm still using the car to get to a location, but my my goal one day is to figure out how I can do it on the Harley. <laughs> Uh, that, would be, that, that, would, that would be that would be pretty cool to say. Oh, yeah, this is my, yeah. he's my yeah, photographer. That, it's coming. It's coming over. I say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a little bit about me. I um I'm, I I live in St Albans in in Hertfordshire. Um, I've uh, I work in media full time. Um, I'm on the I'm on the commercial side. I uh, I work for a company that um, we're a big travel media company. So I work with a lot of tourism boards and things like that. And um, uh, you know, photography. Um, for me, is, I've been interested in it for um, for a long time, but never really explored it in the way that I'm exploring it now. Um, you know, uh, there's lots of there's lots of resources you can use nowadays. That you know, if you've got the if you've got the time and the patience to sit down and learn the camera and learn some of the things that you need to you know uh, adopt as part of your process when taking pictures and then taking them off the camera and, and running them through the, the editing suite, um, then, you know, if you're prepared to sit there and, you know, put the time and effort in to learn those things, then I, I think it just makes a, a huge amount of difference to the, to the quality of your, your photographs. And I've, I've certainly seen that over the past um, few months, um, you know, and, and it kind of excites me. I'm thinking, wow, okay, actually, you know, these, I'm, I'm actually come out with some, some photos now that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of and ones that I, took a few years back that I was proud of. Then I look at them, I'm like, oh, there's so many flaws that, that <laughs> then they were perfect. Then it was the perfect shot. But now I, I've got much more of a, uh, a critical eye and, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and more education. And, and, I, and I feel like I'm better sort of suited to understand composition and exposure and, and just really kind of get into the, get into the finer detail. But I'm still a long way from where I want to be. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's uh, we we all continue to learn, like, and and, yeah. and it's and it's great to think, say, the seeing, you know, obviously the pro, uh, you know, the effort, uh, and you can see that it pays off, right? When you yeah. when you like, okay, it I can notice the difference. But then on the other end, it sort of takes away some of the pleasure from your early shot. You're like, well, this is beautiful, and now yeah. your 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 expert eye, it's looking at the same picture, and saying, oh, so many flaws, like I couldn't accept that. So it's uh, it's funny how you have this uh, sort of sometimes bittersweet. Uh, feeling but so how um how did you learn of it are you entirely sort of self-taught you 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 did you take any any courses uh how did that happen um so i i, I I've, I've got a nikon uh, i've got a nikon d7000 um i bought it when uh, in 2011 actually so it's, it's getting it's getting a bit old now um i went on a uh, I, I climbed kilimanjaro and um we were in africa for two weeks after Kilimanjaro. So I wanted a good camera for Kilimanjaro, but then we were going on a safari as well. So it kind of, you know, I, I wanted more than just the, the point and shoot that I had 
that I was using back then. So, you know, I went out and I made the investment and uh, I kind of got this wonderful sort of camera and, and just constantly shooting on auto and thinking, you know, I'm really not using this camera to its full capabilities. And I'm, I'm a curious person by nature. And so I wanted to kind of get off the, uh, the auto settings and, and understand just the, the camera makeup a little bit more. Um, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia at the time in the United States. Um, so um, I found a, like a little photography group. Um, uh, they called Southeast Photo Adventures. And I reached out to them, a couple of guys that have been sort of in the photography industry for 15 years, camera shops. They kind of knew the camera inside out. And, you know, they would go out, take you out on these little kind of field trips. Um, and then some sort of inside the classroom stuff, just teaching you about the different settings and the relationship that with sort of, you know, um, uh, ISO, uh, shutter speed and aperture. Um, you know, so that just kind of gets you kind of off of that, move the dial around a little bit. And then you start playing with, you know, with, with aperture setting and, 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 and shutter speed setting. Um, but it still wasn't enough. I still wanted to go manual. Um, however, um, you know, the, the, I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's as good an excuse as any, but life, life gets in the way and, and the camera kind of found its way into the, you know, into the, um, into the cupboard and only got pulled out when we were going on a trip somewhere, um, you know, and then, um, you know, the photos were taken off and, you know, maybe brushed up a little bit in, in the editing suite and, and then, you know, shared on Facebook for family and friends and, and, and so <laughs> forth to see it. Um, so, you know, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, for, for someone that's had a nice camera for, for such a long time, it's frustrated me a little bit that it's taken me this long to, to now get it onto manual and, 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 and really kind of um, what I class now is I'm not, I'm not taking pictures now. I kind of class it now as I'm creating pictures, um, you know, because I, I know what I'm trying to achieve, whereas before I would just see something, oh, that's nice, and, 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 and take a shot. Um, now I'm kind of looking at full composition. I'm, I'm waiting for the right time for the, for, for, to take the shot. I'm kind of looking at the elements in the shot and thinking, how can I make it better? So, you know, so it's gone more from taking photos to, to creating images, which is, uh, you know, I think that's the, the, the progression that, the, um, the, the, you know, all photographers want to feel like the journey they're on, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, this is something that, that I notice as well, uh, then when you progress, in, in this in this craft specifically that you're able already to picture and to imagine that 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 full and final uh, and final picture in your head and then you yeah. and then your question is how can I create that rather than say oh I I've been able to to find the perfect shot let's take it I I want to be more in control of that yeah. uh, uh, of of that of that frame do you think uh, so do you think that the sort of your it seems that the now you're really on a, back on, on a path of, of improvement, you're really into photography. It, yeah. Do you think that, uh, uh, again, as a, as a sort of a collateral effect of this COVID-19 epidemic, does, you know, the fact that maybe you were more at home, uh, were you able to sort of focus more and say, this is something that I would like to, to pick up again? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, I, 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 I started doing an online course in the evening um, cause obviously nothing to do. And then, you know, um, when I, you know, I've been working from home, um, pretty much like the, the rest of the world for the past 10 weeks. Um, so it, normally my morning routine would be go to the gym, you know, get changed at the gym, go to the office, come back from the office tired after a full day, sit around, have some dinner, and then just kind of, you know, spend some time with the family. Now I've got that, you know, even, um, you know, I've got that morning to, and there's no gym. So I've been getting up at, you know, even sillier hours to go and catch a sunrise, um, you know, um, and then, you know, more time in the evenings and just generally more time just to kind of, um, you know, spend editing pictures or, um, you know, going through the, the courses. I went on, a, I went online, I found one, um, it was the Shaw Academy. Um, and they're not bad. I mean, the, you know, um, the, the reviews are a bit mixed, mainly in terms of kind of their aggressive billing nature and, you know, I think that there's very little follow up, but they've they've created this kind of um, course online. Um, you know, and you 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 can go you can go on it at the scheduled time, or you can watch the recordings. It's just uh, there's no one there. It's just you and the and the and the, um, and the, and the uh, whoever did the recording. Um, but I think just the way they broke it down, they had eight modules in. Um, you know, uh, they kind of broke it down from the very fundamentals to learning much more about what's inside the camera. 
um, than I ever knew before. Um, you know, the uh, relationship with the camera's relationship with the lens and, you know, your shutter speed's relationship with your focal points and things like that, which I didn't have any clue. It's like, you know, how you get those sharper images. And all of a sudden I started going out and, you know, doing a lesson, going out, practicing, and thinking, wow, that made a huge <laughs> difference, you know? Um, and, and I think there, and then I did the Lightroom one after that, which has kind of got kind of, um, you know, my skills just in terms of getting it off the camera and then just, I, I don't like to, um, uh, you know, over um, edit the, the image. I try and keep it to its kind of, to its true integrity, but obviously I want to just bring out some, some further depth in it. Um, you know, so, you know, the tonal contrasts and, and just playing around with some of the saturation and the, um, and, and the, um, the luminance in some of the, in some of the areas of the shot. Um, and you know, just tweaking the contrast a little bit just to give you that extra sense of depth. It's really, really just opened the, the whole new world of, of, of creating these images. And, and now it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to, um, you know, to, to just, you know, um, now I'm in there, I'm in there, they've got me now. So, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of, you know, every, every, every day, if I don't, if I don't get, you know, a couple of days goes past and I haven't been out somewhere with the camera, I start to get the, I start to get the itch and I'm like, right, okay, the, the 3.30 a.m. alarm's on because I'm going to go and find somewhere to, to shoot a sunrise. <laughs> I mean, the, the, this is the thing that's pretty interesting because you, uh, I mean, clearly your your, your passion, your main uh, object of photography are either sunrise or sunsets, right? So that sort of forces you to to a little bit of a of a difficult schedule sometimes. So there is a lot of commitment just to be able to hopefully take the great shot. And actually, yeah. on on this, uh, um, I want to see if I can uh, share it on the screen uh, right yeah. now. So I think, uh, the, you know, uh, obviously, as usual, I'm going through the, um, you know, uh, my uh, my guest uh, Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, I, I was I was incredibly uh, and positively surprised, you know, the quality, the things. I know we were chatting just before before this interview and say there is and I will tell you there is one picture to say I, I, I want that picture. I okay. sort of I, I, I want to have it. Uh, it gives me such a uh you know such a sense of of anticipation it's something at sunrise maybe we'll have time to just show it on the screen and by the way oh, the yeah. picture that you have behind you it's something that you took yesterday right i, I took this Is yesterday correct? yeah we went down to the cotswolds yesterday and uh um there's that is, is i think it's bilbury um and there's the uh, that little row of kind of cottages um so just um there's a there's a bridge leading over to the cottages and i i took this one on the bridge facing away from the cottages down the river um I, I like this one because once again, it got me kind of thinking about the shot. I wanted to smooth, smooth the water down. I definitely wanted to catch that cloud. I wanted to, to make sure the, 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 the sun was in, um, you know, I got that sort of sun trying to peek through the cloud, um, you know, so, and there was, uh, you know, and I, I kind of, I set it up and, and I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I think I got the, I got the settings right. There's a slight annoyance at the top where I think I've just cropped the, the top of the tree on the, the left-hand side of the, of the uh, shot. Yeah. Um, you know, and I kind of got, I was, ah, oh, man, I dropped the tree. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, um, but you know, these are, it's, it's part of the learning curve, right? Just got to, you got to pay that bit of extra attention it's, it's to just to get that perfect shot. It's got to be, everything's got to be in there, right? So, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let, let's see this other one that, that it's uh, absolutely uh, stunning. Let me see if you see it on the screen okay, right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, T tell us about it this is this is so so perfect so uh, sort of warm and, and and sort of energizing like you can, it, it's obviously taken at sunrise there's yeah. a sense of stillness and again something is, is about to happen but it's positive it you know we're we're starting uh, yeah. and and the colors the, you know, the balance of colors so how how did you achieve uh, uh, how did you probably think about the shot uh, initially um, how did you achieve so that and and how you can, you, can, yeah. you can see from the comments on the Instagram, oh, the, 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 I took it at 5.11. Um, it was towards <laughs> the end of the field. I think I've been in that field since I got there about um, 4.30. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I just, I was looking around and, and I just couldn't find the, um, couldn't find the one I wanted. You know, my eye just wouldn't, wouldn't, um, wouldn't play games, wouldn't, wouldn't play with me. Um, and then I got low and I could see the sun just coming to peek up over the over the top of those houses and I, I got down as far as low as I could get of with the with the camera on the tripod and um, I uh, this is this is three images so this is 
Um, I, I exposed the bracket. Um, uh, I had two, uh, two stops over and two stops under uh, and the normal image. And I think the challenge with this one was there was, there was, a, there was a breeze in the air. And this, this is why I was so happy with it. Um, and I had to just sit there and just wait for that one minute when the wind stopped and then get off three shots. And, you know, the, the third one is a slightly longer exposure because you're two stops overexposing. Um, so the, the shutter's open for a while and you just got to sit there and, and hold your fingers that, <laughs> um, that the, the, the wind isn't going to move it. Because when you try and blend these three pictures together, um, then you're going to get movement inside and the poppies aren't going to, they're not going to line up. Um, so it just took an incredible amount of patience and I could, I could see the, I could see the sun rising and I was thinking, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> and then for that, for that tiny second, the wind just stopped and the poppies stopped blowing and, and, and I, I, I hit the shutter button and, and it, it ran off its three shots. And I, th I thought when I took it, I thought I, I looked at the, I looked at the exposure on the first one. I checked the histogram. Um, knowing that the other one, one was going to be underexposed, one was going to be over, but I looked at the, the histogram on the, uh, on the, the one that was neutral and it looked pretty good. And I thought, okay, if that one looks good. Then the other two should, should lay in nicely sort of under it and over it. Um, and I think I've got a really good shot and I, I packed up my camera. I, I drove back to the house and you know, <laughs> I made a coffee and sat there and, and put this straight into the editing suite. And I was like, okay, I got a, I got a, I got a good shot, you know? And, it, and, it, and, and there were a couple of others that um, that weren't bad for the day, but um, but this one was the this one was definitely the the, the, the shot of the morning. Uh, this is again, it's 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 so beautiful. Did you uh, yeah. did you then use like Lightroom and Photoshop? Uh, just like um, yeah, just, just the, Lightroom. I, I, just Lightroom. I, I say this was three images, um, so I had to um, uh, uh, just you know play lay the images together. Did a bit of tone mapping just to. You know, just to um, uh, enhance the, uh, the 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 image a little bit, just to get that kind of um, orange glow. Uh, I think that needed just a little bit of work, um, but you know, it didn't didn't take too much sort of post production just to um, just to get it looking like that. No, it's just uh, it is just just standing the the colors yeah. how they blend together. Uh, yeah. it, it is it is really really beautiful. Again, you know your Instagram it's uh, it's, it's it's so it's so warm. It, this is if I had to use one one word it's it's warm. Right, it gives me gives me that 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 uh, the nice uh, you know glowing feeling uh, yeah. in uh, in that respect. I think that's the that's the joy of of you know um, shooting at sunrise, right? You know you um, you know you get that kind of your your images get that warm kind of golden glow over them, and or or you know there's a couple on the on the feed as well that there's you know a really nice purpley pink hue has kind of come up just with the with the sun and you know and and if you're not out of bed, you know, those, those moments, they literally, they're there and gone. They're gone in 10 minutes, you know? And, and, you know, when, when we normally wake up, you know, we get a blue sky or we get a gray sky. Normally in England, it's a gray sky, <laughs> 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 you know, but, but, but it, you don't get that, that richness of color and, and, and everything. And, and, you know, and, um, you know, I've kind of always, I always, you know, if my, when my alarm's going off at that ridiculous time of day, I'm always like sleeping and you miss it, sleeping and you miss it. It's become my, it's become my new mantra, you know. <laughs> so. You should have, you, you, you could have like something like, uh, you know, when the face is your, uh, your bed and you open your eyes and sleep and you miss it and then, and then you jump uh, out of bed. It's actually yeah. a, 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 an interesting quote. No, yeah. it, it's it's great. So you said that you use uh, like a, a Nikon uh, D still D D seven thousand, right? D7000, uh, yeah. And what 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 lens do you normally use uh, to capture this? this lens? Um, I've got a uh, what is it? My I've, I mean, I've it's the stock lens that came with the camera. Um, okay. It's an eighteen. Um, what is it? It's an eighteen to one thirty. I think it is. Um, so it's got quite a quite a nice um, range in it. You know, it's. Um, um, you know, be before I didn't really understand the relationship between the shutter speed and the and the um, uh, and the focal point. Um, you know, so I would click away and have the you know the, the <laughs> thing turn right up. You know, the focal point up high and the and, and just not the right shutter speed for the image. So now I've got that understanding. Um, you know, I'm actually in the process of upgrading all my gear. I've kind of convinced my 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 better half that that you know if I'm gonna um, you know I need a full frame camera. Um, you know, and you know, and you know, the trifactor of lenses, the kind of three, 
you know, three really, really good lenses. Um, you know, I think that um, it, the funny thing is, is um, the, the company I work for, we always write these letters to the future, right? Um, okay. You know, in terms of at the beginning of the year, the whole company sends uh, uh, the CEO uh, a letter of, 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 of what they want their future to look like, you know? And I'm in my, I'm in my early 50s now. Um, I've been with the company for, for 16 years. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I've, I kind of said to him, look, you know, I'm, I'm on the, I'm, 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 on, I'm coming into land now for my, for my career, right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the home stretch and all I want to do when I leave here is have enough, um, uh, you know, financial um, finances behind me to be able to just travel the world and, and take great pictures, you know? And I think that subconsciously my mind, you know, if I, if I don't learn photography, I'm not going to be able to travel the world and take great pictures. I can travel the world and take pictures, but I'm not going to take great pictures. You know, so I think that, that you know, that, that, that was kind of a, a driver for me because, you know, ideally that's what I'd like to do. And if I can, you know, and if, and if I can get paid for it, you know, if I can, you know, put these on a, on, a, on a photographic website and magazines pick them up or, you know, like, you know, people like yourself, they, you know, they want to, they think, know, I'd like to have that hanging on my wall and, you know, and I can, I can make them available somehow, then, then, then fantastic, you know, and I think that is, um, you know, that, that's definitely a, uh, a path that I'm, I'm exploring now and just kind of seeing if that is a, is a, is a sort of a, a viable future once I, once I decide that, that the media career is no longer for me. Uh, okay, but because you, you're working, obviously, in, in a media company, but also that, that deals with, you know, travels and other things, is there any, any yeah. possibility of, of sort of, um, you know, uh, making, uh, <laughs> you, know, well, you know, sometimes you, you, you can, uh, you can obviously say, this is a great, you know, something that I'm incredibly interested in uh, yeah. and I'm getting, I'm getting quite good at it. Uh, yeah. and so you can sort of, uh, you know, kill two birds with one stone. You know, the, the funny thing is I, I said to my wife, actually, uh, it's just this morning. I was like, wouldn't it be great if, if I, if they brought me in, they, they moved my position over to be the, you know, the, the resident photographer, because I know that a lot of what we do at the moment is, you know, they'll, they'll send a, a photo journalist out on an assignment. So, you know, you're killing two birds with one stone. You've got, you know, they're, they're writing the story and also they've got some, you know, some, some good photo taking capabilities. We, you know, we're essentially, we're a magazine publisher. Um, you know, we work for, um, uh, you know, uh, some of the world's major airlines. I mean, EasyJet, we've been doing their magazine for 20, 20 odd years. Uh, United Airlines, American Airlines in the United States. Um, you know, so they're pretty big, big magazines. They're the ones that go in in the seat back pockets. So they have quite a quite a large distribution and readership. So I, you know, I'd love to get some 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 uh, some credit in there. You know, um, uh, so maybe that's a conversation I need to have with them. Look, you know, I'd like to just move switch switch departments and 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 you know pursue my passion and still still work for the company I, I love. You know. <laughs> oh, why, why not why not it could be it could be i mean you your work speaks for for itself right you know yeah. you, you you now you now have credentials in addition to obviously being with a company for 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 you know for so long and, and showing that obviously you know the business inside out you know just yeah. just a thought and, it, and it's interesting how again sometimes you know our passion photography especially so many applications like the people obviously you need to be passionate it's a hobby but then you realize that you know daily that could yeah. actually help, uh, obviously, in your position specifically, but anywhere, you know, can be marketing, can be in sales, just the, the, the ability to, to understand that, that those, those pictures, how they're made. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it would be quite, quite interesting. But so you said you, um, uh, you're now ready to upgrade to, to a full frame. Uh, still, yeah. still, not, still Nikon? Uh, or Nikon? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a, you know, I, 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 I tend to be quite loyal and, you know, the, the, the Nikon's done me well and I've been eyeing up the D850. Um, okay. uh, I've, got a, I've got a little wish list set, set up on one of the camera websites, um, on the, uh, you know, that's kind of, uh, um, I've got three lenses picked out, um, you know, and uh, actually four lenses picked out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just I've got a, 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 I don't have a 50 millimeter prime lens and, you know, I kind of always feel that um, I, I should have one of those in my bag. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, I picked out the 50 millimeter prime plus, um, you know, three, um, three lenses that uh, offer different um, uh, focal points, you know, so going right up to, uh, to 300 mil, you know, if I want to, I'd like to get in, you know, I've been looking at some of the, you know, I, I've been paying a lot more attention to photographers on Instagram recently as well. And there's some absolutely phenomenal work that some of them are putting out there. And, you know, so, I, um, you know, astrophotography, 
you know, I'd love to, I'd love to kind of, you know, just go to a remote location and just, you know, try, try out astrophotography. I did a, I did a Pamarana yesterday for my, my first one it actually came out quite well. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you after this call. Um, uh, the Avery monument, which is like these, um, it's like Stonehenge, but it, they, they were made before Stonehenge. Okay. Uh, they're in, they're in the Cotswolds. Um, so that I got in this high vantage point and I took this, um, this, this, uh, this, these three, this panorama, three shots, but it's actually nine shots because each one was shot in, uh, with, with bracketing. So then I merged them all together and I, uh, I pulled them out this morning and put it together. I was like, wow, you know, it's my, it's my first panoramic. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is, it, it, you know, it got me excited when I was looking at it. <laughs> Of course, I mean it, it, it's incredible how you know. Then you see it and say, "This is this is this is really good." And again, if it's just the first attempt, you can only go, uh, yeah. you know, it can only become uh, better. But what uh, taking sort of one step uh, backwards, what, why? I I I'll say more often than than not, people tend to sort of say, "I want to start with taking pictures of people." Right, I want to get into portrait. It's just easier, uh, you yeah. know. Your friends, or your friends will love you because take great pictures of them. Uh, or you know, you're, you're obviously at a party. And maybe you can do wedding on the side. Uh, you said you, you you take the director say, I love landscapes. I love yeah. to take this. Uh, well, um, is any specific reason it just happened or? or um, yeah, I think landscapes are just easier because you you know um, I have a I have a I have a twelve year old daughter and she's the most unwilling model ever. <laughs> yeah, when I do actually catch her and take a take a picture, she's very photogenic. Um, but she just no, nope, not I mean, not taking any pictures, and you know, and, and then we'll book in. I'll be like, please just let me have two hours at the weekend in two weeks' time, and then she'll cancel on me. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> just completely resistant. So um, I've I've struggled a little bit with 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 portrait. Um, you know, I, I, there's some I, I follow some of the some of the younger street photographers. Um, you know, some of those guys that are doing some really awesome kind of creative work, um, you know, um, I'd, I'd like to kind of maybe explore into that. Um, but I'm kind of just, I'm working on getting one thing kind of mastered um, as opposed to start jumping around and, you know, and, and not really understanding, you know, I, I like, I like, I like, I like the travel aspect of landscape, um, you know, um, and uh you know so that that adds an extra to it and and i think if you you know if i if i stick with that then i'll, I'll you know i can just i can only get better um, whereas if i start kind of you know trying all these different elements then i think it kind of gets a bit a little bit messy maybe um you know then i'm learning this and i'm learning that and you know so for now i'll, I'll i'm quite happy with the landscapes if i can you know if i can get into portraiture if someone comes up and says to me you know, I, I like your photos on Instagram. Would you, would you come around and do a family shoot? I wouldn't say no because it would give me, it would give me that opportunity to to, to dabble in there. Um, but I think it's it's just a little bit harder to um, you know to get the to, to 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 get the whole sort of situation set up. You know. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. You want to master? Yeah, one. Well, I'm saying like, one thing at a time, uh, and then yeah. actually then helps a lot in the learning process of the second thing because you you have a certain structure. It, you yeah. know that that, <laughs> that 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 that's absolutely true. Uh, I actually wanted to pull another another picture on on the screen of, of mm. yours, and uh, and this for at least obviously to me, and I'm really interesting to interested to 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 hear your uh, this. I felt at the beginning sort of uh, a, a sense of dissonance uh, compared to what you normally have, and also why sort of I uh, I guess like oh that that must have something uh, in there, and it's another stunning shot. Let me see if I, I can uh, pull that one up. Uh, yeah, th this one um, uh, this was taken at Beachy Head and. Um, I think the the it was it was the effort that went in to to get in this shot right. Um, this this lighthouse is it's a tiny little lighthouse. It's not like one of the huge ones. Um, and getting a getting a good angle on it was nigh on impossible. And I was walking around the the cliff edge and I'm trying to find a good shot. And and I was and um, uh, my wife was sitting in the car. We we have three dogs and. They were sitting in there as well, and, and like, you know, and, and it was just coming up to, to to sunset. I think I had about fifteen minutes to 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 get a to get a to get a location, um, 
and then I noticed there was this kind of rather steep um, walk down this down the hill where you were kind of halfway down the cliff. And then when I got there, I kind of I, there was this ledge, and I got out onto the ledge. And you know, uh, seriously, I mean, I've got like a you know a two hundred foot drop either side of this ledge, right? It's, and I'm. Wow. I've rested the tripod on there and I'm, I'm on my knees and I'm being ultra careful A that I didn't fall and B I didn't drop any of the uh, uh, drop any of the equipment and and I think the reason I like this was this was the first time that I'd um, I'd used this uh, the, the filter I'd only just got the filter um, that week and um, I wanted to just soften out the the, the ocean was quite rough um, and I wanted to just completely take that out of the shot and just smooth it right down. So, so I turned the filter right up to, um, to, to 32, which was its highest, it was one of those um, uh, variable ones. Um, okay. And then I turned the, the, the f-stop um, uh, right up to 20. Um, so I had a very small aperture. That enabled me to, 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 keep, the, to keep the lens, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the shutter open for a long time. Once again, it was three images, it was merged into one. So to, to get all that exposure. I think the one thing that annoys me about this is just that big kind of cliff edge in the way. There's just, I couldn't come out any further. If I'd have come out any further, I would have <laughs> needed a parachute or base jumped down to the beach and, to, and took the picture on the, on, from, the, from, the, uh, from the floor below. Um, but that was the best I could do. But I just, I kind of just love the colors, the, the way that the, that the, the, angle, the camera of the angle was so pointed down that all I got was the, the orange glow from that kind of the 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 the, the start of the sunset. I'd completely smoothed out the um the um the the, the water, you know, the roughness of the water. Um, and then the you know, and, and obviously there's nothing I could do about the the, the rock face in front of me. That was <laughs> that was that was going to be there no matter what. But I kind of like the I like the composition. It looks better in a landscape. Um, I, I I did it this way for for Instagram, but on the landscape one. You know, kind of sort of taking in your your rule of thirds. That sort of lighthouse is kind of tucked away on the on the third of the of the shot, and then you've just got this vast expanse of, of ocean through, sort of reaching out for the for the other for the for the other half of the shot. This this really only tells half the picture. Um, but I, I I edited this down for Instagram just to just to kind of get it to get, to get the shot in the in the Instagram format. Normally I post them in in landscape, but for some reason I had a I had a niche to get this in the in the proper Instagram format. Uh, I mean, and you know, when I mentioned before that, that there was some some contrast, is it was in a in a, in in a in a, in a positive way, in a sense yeah. that the the you know, it's probably related to the obviously sunrise and sunset, you know, the beginning, and then you know, when you take set a picture of sun, this this really tells me. You know, see, you know the vastity of the universe, and, yeah. and you sort of your your eyes, and, and I can imagine in 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 a, in a wider sort of panoramic shot, you can yeah. see that the tiny and and we are some, that lighthouse, like <laughs> uh, potentially that that we look outside of this vast mass of uh, uh, of water, and and it's at the same time, uh, uh, you know, you like uh, disconcerting, but also incredibly calming, right? And yeah. You feel that yeah. that that it was still, uh, and, and so again, the ability to tell. Uh, that story in in just one picture, uh, it, it's great. But what I like about this this sort of uh, you know this interviews, it's that then you know you you finally tell the story of that picture. You know how you risk your life or at least this part of your equipment to fall somewhere just to catch. So you know the the, the length that that the the, the, the the you know the effort that we take just for yeah. that crazy shot in that in the minimal amount of time uh, i think the, uh, the, the toughest thing was actually walking back up because you know i was <laughs> losing the light and i you know coming down the hill i knew it was steep but get going back up it was like you know by the time i got it i think it took me a good must have taken me a good five ten minutes to, to 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 work my way back up to the to the to the top of the cliff um and it was it felt so much steeper going up than than, than coming down and uh you know, and, and it's and you know, you, it's uh, it was pretty pretty challenging conditions all around, and and I think what it also did for me, it kind of it showed me what I was willing to do, to 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 get the shot. I was willing to kind of go where you know only probably a few people would have would have would have done that, and I was thinking, okay, that that you know that 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 tells you something because you know you'll get those angles that 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 ninety nine percent of people won't go get because they won't make that they won't go that extra distance, you know. 
Uh, absolutely, the, the, this is the, uh, well said. You know, the <laughs> that that, that is what makes the difference. Uh, who who do you follow on Instagram? Is there any uh, any other photographer that again like you is willing to to push uh, himself or herself to to their their very their very limit yeah. to, to take to take um, the shot? I, I I mean I don't know them personally. Um, so but they seem to me like they're you know they're 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 out there they're in the wild and they're getting up at crazy hours of the day. Um, um, uh, Peter Lick, I'm a big fan of, of, of Peter Lick. I actually met him, um, he invited me over to his um, office photography studio. Well, it's not a studio because they, they do all of, he does all his work outside of the, you know, he's a landscape photographer. But, you know, they, he's got his own processing um, operation uh, where he, they, you know, you put the order in at one of his stores and then, you know, they run it all off there. They make the frames. They bring the picture out. It gets a stamp. And I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but, you know, he sold photos for, like, millions of millions of dollars, um, like wow. huge, big, uh, big sort of hero landscape shots. Um, um, I've got a signed copy of his thing called The Big Book, and uh, I received a sort of an invitation to, um, to go and meet him one day, and kind of he, he wanted to be the photographer for one of our magazines. Uh, he wanted to be the cover photographer. Um, Unfortunately, the, you know, we would have loved it because he's that good, but um, the, um, you know, the, his style, we had to go with the, the format of the magazine um, and, and it just didn't work. Um, but, but it was great to sort of sit down and meet him. So I, I follow him. Um, uh, Joshua Snow, which is another one out of the States. Um, I, I, he does some great work. Uh, uh, Josh Beams over in, in Australia. Um, he's, you know, these are all kind of, you know, the, they, they put these amazing landscapes with the astrophotography behind it. You know, you've got, you've got flowers in the front, you've got mountains in the back, and then you've got the, wow. you know, the, the Milky Way behind it. And you're just like thinking, how do you do that? You know? And, and I think, you know, when I, when I get to, when I, when I start producing images like that, um, then, then, then I, then I know I've arrived, <laughs> you know, but they, they, those are my inspiration. <laughs> they, you know, those, those are the guys that inspire me. Cause I look at them and I think that's, that's where you've got to get to Steve. If you want to be, you know, if you want to be if you want to be good at this, then these are the images you've got to turn out. You know. Well, it, it, it's it's good to to have to have the, these goals and to have people that, uh, yeah. you know, that we inspire to uh, to be and 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 of course you want to have your own style, right? You know, you, you take you take inspiration, but then you you want to make your own. You know, they yeah. they already yeah. have mastered and cover, and they know that this is sort of their signature. And like, wait, yeah. what, what what one mind would be? Uh, and, yeah. and again, it's yeah. a, it's a constant inspiration. And I think I, I love how you know, obviously, Instagram is the platform for for photographers, and how that sort of freed uh, you know an entire uh, an entire community. I think I have a feeling that people that, that like photography and photographers, uh, they're always feeling of like. Um, being elitist to to an extent, say, oh, this is something that it's too difficult to for you even to understand, let alone to yeah. replicate. And now that every every you know everyone is able to consume this type of of art, uh, yeah. then it made it made it more accessible and sort of democratize uh, photography yeah, yeah. In, in in a very good way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I uh, I, I only started my Instagram. Uh, I think I started posting every day, like one daily image. Um, I made it a uh, kind of a thought process, a, a conscious decision. Say, okay, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna do this properly, then you know you need to build up um, a, a nice Instagram gallery um, and see if people want to come along for the ride. You know, um, so you know, as I've you know, I've, as I've kind of uh, you know, people are liking my images. I'm sort of seeing they've got photography in their hand. Also, I'm clicking on their name, and I'm like, wow, these these guys are really really good as well. And you know, and and it's just here in the UK, I mean, there's just a wealth of talent. And, you know, and, and I got my first, um, I got my first feature actually this weekend. I, uh, one of the local um, uh, Hertfordshire Instagram sites, you know, you, you tag them on the photos and every now and again, you know, you might get a, they might use one of your images and, and give you the daily image. So they gave me over the weekend and it, it kind of, I started getting lots of kind of, you know, um, likes and sort of comments from, other photographers in Hertfordshire and I was clicking on their work and even that I was thinking I was running out of locations because I, I, I've only lived in Hertfordshire for a couple of years and I've really you know I've only really just started exploring you know the locations around me and what's here so these guys have just opened up a whole world now of like hang on there's plenty more you know just on your on my doorstep that I can actually actually go to without having to you know go go down to the Cotswolds or drive all the way down to the to, to the coastline to get something. You know, so so it's it's great. I think Instagram is 
you know it's a phenomenal tool and 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 it's a uh, you know it's a it's a great place for inspiration i also find that the the uh, i guess the the kind of the upcoming photographer community are very supportive of each other um you know they 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 like you know they, they like your work they, they they share it out and they're like you know you've got to go follow this guy he's doing some great stuff and you know and and, and I was, uh, it's, it's quite warming when you know everyone's kind of everyone feels like they're in it together you know you, you know they want you all your their followers to follow you you want all your followers to follow them and, and not that i have that many but it's still it's still a nice ecosystem that's 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 developed there and you know coming from somebody that's kind of um been sort of you know focused on twitter and the politics for the, for the past <laughs> years and i'm not going to go into politics but you know that's a quite a volatile um uh, area um going on to instagram on the on the photography side it's just you know it's just a completely different way to start the day <laughs> it is a different it is a different feeling especially with the word that you use supportive like that you move away yeah. from you know partisan and uh, uh to instead you know that that's great i help you out rather than say oh you're wrong or you're right it, you, you're right it's a sense of community and the fact that people are more than willing to share and to yeah. lift someone else uh to to a higher level it's it's great and i think what makes that that community uh what it is what it is today what is on this line what is it something that obviously you know today but you wish you knew it <laughs> when you started like uh, one, one tip on one thing that, that really would, would have made uh, a difference or shorten your learning curve um i just wish i would have understood the the got to know the camera a lot better you know in terms of you know, I, I, to me, for, for years and years, years, a lens was a lens. I had a zoom lens. I, I had one that they, I, I had one that can, you know, uh, my 300 lens pulls things in pretty, pretty close. And that's my zoom lens. And then I've got this, uh, this other one that kind of is really useful. That was why that was what I <laughs> describing my lenses, you know, and, and I really didn't understand the, 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 the relationship between, you know, the, the lens and the camera and, and, and then the, the, other, the things in the lens. So, um, uh, I think that's uh, you know if I'd have, I think if I'd have got that sooner and I'd have started getting those kind of razor sharp images um, a lot sooner, um, and then also bracketing as well. I think that's a new thing. It's something that I've I've learned very recently. Um, you know, and and you know I do especially with 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 sunrise and sunset. You know, you've got the glaring sun coming in, and it just completely plays around with the camera's reading of exposure. You know, and you know you, you're going to get one part of the image. On exposure, you're gonna get the other part, you know, underexposed, or because the camera just doesn't know what's going on, you know. And you know, and the, the D7000, I think it's a great camera, but it's quite limited in its um, mm. in its in its dynamic range, um, you know. So for me to sort of learn exposure bracketing, um, you know, with the D7000, then you know that that's that's really made a big difference to the to the to the quality of the images, um, and that's why I've kind of you know I'm you know I've read the, all the things that I've read about the um, the the D850. It's kind of you know when it comes to its dynamic range, it's 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 far superior than than a lot of the other cameras on the market. So and these are people that use it and have been using it for a couple of years. So so um, that's why I'm sort of eager to do that because I don't constantly want to have to you know use exposure bracketing. I actually want to go out and have one image and that's the image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, you 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 learning the, the the ropes. You you you're able to get great results. And then, yeah. of course, now that you can master the tool, say, okay, I, I, I'm ready for a better tool that will simplify yeah. my life yeah. and will enable me to create even, even greater work. Uh, Steve, th that was a fantastic uh, conversation. Well, you know, one last thing uh, for you know, everyone that would like to, to, to contact you, look at your work, uh, where can they find you uh, on, uh, you know, on the web? Um, uh, probably my, my Instagram is the best place. So it's, um, it's Stevie and underscore photography. So Stevie and uh, all one, and then underscore photography. It's a bit of a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, don't worry. We'll we... Up on the screen for me when, uh, when It will be. It will be in the description <laughs> and on the screen. Uh, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure that we're able to uh, to find you. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time today and for sharing uh, uh, your experience. And again, stunning, stunning pictures. Uh, it, it was a pleasure. Thank you, thank you, and, I, and I'll send you. Uh, I'll send you the high-res version of that picture, so you can uh, you can print it out and put it on your wall. All right, <laughs> that, that, that will be fantastic. Thank uh, you, thank you so much. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, David. Okay, take care. Bye. Okay, bye. -bye.